is at is NFT Battleground at the UFC Apex in Las Vegas. Um, <laughs> I'm going to start here. We've been joking about this, Rich. What explain to everybody what the blue hell the UFC Apex actually is and why are they running here? I know it's TKO related, but what the hell? It's such a small venue. Yeah, so it's based, it's, it's basically like a performance center for UFC. But smaller. That's it. That's, it's smaller. just it looks smaller. Yeah. yeah, it's like if you, you married everything they're doing at TKO, so you have the performance center, and then you have like their uh, full sale production. Actually, probably about the size of the full sale spot back in the day, where it was uh, a tiny dancer, and it fits like I want to say under a thousand, and full sale barely did two hundred. And so it's 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 one of those deals where they're trying to save some money on rent. And at the same time, get them out there in Las Vegas so they can grab that TKO has synergy. Yeah. So yeah, I, I rolled my eyes when I saw the attendance on Russell Pick. I'm like, really? It's that little? Like, oh my God. Like, you go from doing an arena on WrestleMania weekend to this? Like, really? Like, it's weird. Well, think about it this way, Blake. When they do it inside of the Apex, you keep 100% of the gate and 100% of the merch and 100% of the concessions. Very true. I did see some of the seating, the seating prices were like 150 bucks for like one seat. I'm like, what the fuck? Come on. <laughs> like they, it. It's like, listen, the, you know what the last event was before they have this event here? What? Power Slap 7. Oh my God. I forgot that was still a thing. I forgot that was still a thing. <laughs> oh my Lord. Ugh. Oh my Lord. All right. Oh, we have NXT Battleground. And this is actually turning out to be a fucking stock show. I did not expect this to be such a stacked show. And we'll get into this, the real stuff at the end. We'll start from the bottom to the top. Um, NXT Underground will be the first time to take this on the road. It will be Shayna Baszler versus Lola Vice. Um, I, I like Shayna going like, I'm bringing back the old Shayna Baszler. I'm bringing her back. I'm like, if they bring back her music, I'm going to fucking pop. I'm going to pop. If I hear the horses, I'm going to lose it. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I saw the Christian this morning. I'm like, if I hear the horses play, because I miss that music so much. <laughs> Same. So I hear the horses. I am going to pop. Um, it is. I, I don't know what to do with this one because in my brain, it Shayna should win this match, and then they have a rematch down the road. But should Lola lose this match when she just won the first time? What do you think, Rich? I think Shayna needs to win. I think Lola. Her undoing needs to be, as they've been saying, like maybe a little too much shaky, shaky, a little too much hip swiveling, and she gets caught. This is also the match I'm glad we started by, with this one. That kind of uh, exemplifies maybe a reason why they use the Apex, because of the UFC setup. It's a place where they know they can fit it in there. They can maximize seating around it, and they can set it up to look really cool. I'm sure, especially with Lee fitting at the helm, they're going to find some cool camera shots that we haven't seen outside of UFC for them, and I, I'm looking forward to seeing that too. Do you think they're going to use the um like the, the the cage they keep showing in the commercials or no for this? I think so. I think so. What I, do I you think? Conversation on PWT Talk NXT. Someone's wondering mm -hmm. what your opinion would be on that because I was thinking about it. I'm not yeah, sure. I I think it'll be fun for me I, if if they go with that cage. It looks good. It's a little cumbersome, and it might need some time to kind of like to be de deconstructed or gotten out of the way. But with a show like this, I think the people aren't going to mind if they have to do a little mini intermission or if the finishing angle is enough where they have to hospitalize somebody or stretch them out. They'll have time to kind of fix it up. <laughs> Potential marks. Potential marks up there. All right. Well, I, okay. So I see Shane winning this too. I think it'd be fun. It should be interesting. I don't know how this is going to work, so I'm intrigued. And I've never really seen Shayna in the MMA world because I'm not an MMA person. So I'll mm -hmm. be interested to see her in this world. And they see what they let them do. See what they let them do. And what they can get away with. You know? It's a lot of fun. All right. NXT Tag Team Championship. It is Nathan Frazier and Axiom defending against Good Brothers of the OC. Or these guys. What do you want to call them today? Um, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson. I, I, I can't go against Christian. Because he loves Nathan Frazier and Axiom. I can't go against them. Um, so you guys love Axiom since a kid. Um... And Nathan Frader, he fell in love with the minute he heard his entrance music. <laughs> and it became his entrance music in the video game. The original, oh. the music, the original music became Nathan, his music in the video game. So I can't go against them. But again, again, it wouldn't even shock me if the girls won this match. What do you think, Rich? Yeah, I, I, I could see the OC winning. But I think it helps more for the storyline of what they're building with the 
the two youngins is if they get the win over a team that's an established legendary team. Also true. Exactly. I think they need this win because mm-hmm. it's for NXT for them to say, hey, we beat the OC. Yeah. Like, it's good for them to say that. It's like when yeah. um, like Braun Breaker beat Dolph Ziggler for the title. He could say that. You know, like one of those things. So that's the best mm-hmm. Or wherever Roxanne like beat the random people that come up on the main roster. <laughs> like, I, I beat them. Look at that. <laughs> So, all right, cool. Moving on, we have the NXT Women North. This is a great to say. NXT Women North American Championship. I love saying it. Mandy is so excited for this being a thing. It is a ladder match. It is, and I'm not going to make fun of their names, much like um, much like everyone else has been doing right now. I'm not doing that. Um, by the way, Brassing Brassing Media, that um, Zach Haydorn and um, can't think of his name right now. Tyler Sage. Uh, Tyler Sage, thank you. On um, on their show today, they actually um pull up Kathy BG to, to find that they can make uh, make worse names than the NXT names. It's actually a very funny segment of the show today. <laughs> so, um, still Ruka, Last Legend, Jada Parker, Fallon Henry, Michin Miam, and Kehlani Jordan. Who I was joking around with Mandy that she's going to be some little boy, little black boy's crush for the rest of his life. Um. <laughs> um I have a couple of ways to go with this, but I'll, I'll, I'll go to you first on this. I have a couple of ways I'm going with this. Okay, so the way this card's built, you have a lot of outsiders, like non-NXT people, plus the NXT insiders, like either defending or, or challenging for a title. So to balance this one, I think this has to go to one of the five women that are already based in NXT. And out of those five, I kind of break it down like Soul, Kalani, or Lash Legend to tie into the storyline with Trick and everything else. And so I'm going to go with Sol Rucka. I think they could talk about the knee injury, her comeback, and her imploding cutter off a ladder. Oh, my God. That's something. Gonna, she doesn't have to win. And to do that no. spot, that'll be all over the place. That spot could be everywhere. I, I, I yeah. thought about that while we were watching NXT this week. When you hit that move, I looked at me and I was like, that's going to be off a ladder. She's going to yep. be off a ladder. She's like, she's like, oh, shit. I didn't even think of that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that. So, but she has that spot. But the one reason I don't think she is going to win this match, she's going to have the spot that they were going she's, to forget more than the match. <laughs> I think about the inaugural men's North American Championship, and when you say that, she's ricochet. Crap, you're right. Ooh, that's a good point. That's a good point of way of looking at it. When this was announced, before they even announced people, I literally had three people in mind. Paul Henley, um, Rebound Thea Hale, and Keanu Jordan. Those are the three people I had in my brain when they say before they announce anybody. So obviously, Thea Hale's not here. Um, Kalani Jordan, I think, is going to be someone that's going to be an up and coming star eventually. So she doesn't have to win this match now. That leaves me with Fallon Henley. And I think she should win this as the heel. And then you have someone like Sol Ruka beat her for the title down the road. And you have an actual really cool mid crew feud. Mm-hmm. Where the up and coming star like Laruka or Kalani Jordan can be Fallon Henley at a future show. That's where I'm leaning at right now. That makes sense. And I wouldn't mind as a dark horse if Michin won it and she got to run a little bit where she could do like a Natalia, where she runs down there and then when she loses it, she loses to one of those women and they kind of keep it moving. And of course, that is dependent upon, I don't know what Michin's contract status is, because it seems like a lot of folks are coming up in the next three to five when months. I read yesterday, it sounds like her contract is not the same as like the retribution. All done. It's a completely different contract. I actually, okay. Somebody brought it up yesterday on Twitter, actually. So, so okay. like that was so it was just not. the dudes that were having the issue <laughs> with her. Because she was already on under contract before okay. in the group. So she's under a completely different contract than okay. everybody else. So she's not involved with like Dijak and all them who are getting released like next week because the contract expired. So like, unfortunately, Dijak, poor Dijak. He was doing so great in NXT. I, I'm so pissed about that. I really am. So, all right. Um, let's move on to the, oh, actually, one more thing about Meechin. Or me, yeah, I, I have a hard time calling her Meechin. Especially in NXT. Especially in NXT. Um, if she wins, I can almost see her and um, Keith Lee posing with their North American championships for like a photo shoot on her, on her Instagram. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just for the fun of it <laughs> i could totally see that happening so just throwing that out there all right um the nxt north america championship we have everyone's um favorite cool guy all femi defending against joe coffee and wesley i don't know why i put two s's there it should only be one but um 
Oh, Femi he might be the coolest fucking person on this show right now. He might just be the coolest person in the world. Like, I didn't expect it, and he is so fucking cool. Like, like there's no reason for him to be this cool. And he's just good. I don't yeah. think he's just good. Listen, I, I look at what's going on with Shawn Michaels in NXT, and the one common denominator is this dude is fine and cool, folks, and leaning into them while teaching them how to wrestle. And that allows them to be better characters. And they might not necessarily be five-star wrestlers off the bat, but they're going to be people you care about. And that's more important than anything. Mm-hmm. Or you're going to remember. You're going to remember. Yes. Them. That's the important yes. part. Yes. Remembering who they are. It's not like even- Omos? He got done a disservice by just being a big di- guy that was in Raw Underground. Obafemi, when he finally makes it to Raw or SmackDown, He's going to do like Braun and Ilya are right now, where fe- people see him and they appreciate. Like Braun Breaker versus Obafemi on the main roster. Braun, Braun Strowman versus Obafemi. I want a Haas fight. Oh, I, I didn't even think of Strowman versus Femi. Holy shit, that just sounds amazing. <laughs> or if you make them a, a, a redux of like the 90s uh, Earthquake and Vader half ton of Holy Hell. Ooh. And it's just those two guys, like we eat you now. Ooh, that, that, that'd be insane. That'd be fucking crazy. So, um, okay, so it's Joe Coffey's in this match, pretty much taking this place of our favorite Viking, Hoover jeans. I'm obsessed with that. I'm sorry. When, 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 when Ivar came out wearing jeans, I was obsessed with that for like two weeks. <laughs> I didn't expect it, and it made me laugh so damn hard. <laughs> like, stop making fun of me because I was so obsessed with that that night. <laughs> but, um, Joe Coffey's here. I'm happy Joe Coffey's here. I'm happy mm-hmm. to see that Gallus is back. But I just don't know if they're going to take the belt off of Femi. I don't think they will. What do you think? Nah. I think Oba Femi's got to keep this bad boy, and they got to build it to somebody else, either taking it away from kind of like Sammy with Gunther. They need someone to kind of like like a Wesley once he's a little healthier. Or Dante that'd be cool. Or Dante Chen. <laughs> Ooh. Listen, if Dante, if they could get my man Dante Chen on that, on that train, and it, oh, I'm here for it. I, I just throw it out there because uh, the funny part about the Dante Chen thing, so I, we're watching the show. Mainly, obviously, it doesn't follow the podcast world like I do. So when the music hit, and I, I knew exactly who it was, <laughs> I knew who it was when he plays the Laser King. The music hit, and I'm like, no fucking way. Is that Dante Chen? There's no way. Music hit. And the name came up on the screen, and Mandy's like, why are they popping so hard? Like, what is going on? Like, why wouldn't you? It's Dante freaking Chen. Like, but she's like, why are they reacting like that? But he's a hero here. Like, he's their hero. So it was great to see him. I'm happy he's actually in a storyline now. It's actually really cool. He's actually in a story. But good for him. But yeah, that's, that's somebody you could throw out there to beat almost me down the road, too. So. All right. Uh, okay. Now, this is where things get interesting. This is where things get really interesting. Because if you told me two months ago, WrestleMania weekend, that these two matches would be the headline matches of an NXT show, I would have never believed you <laughs> at any level. But here we are. We'll start with the women. We discussed this last week. Um, and we, we, we broke down everything that happened on NXT last week on, on last week's show. With clips and everything. It was crazy last week. But here we are. It is Roxanne Perez defending the NXT Women's Championship. <laughs> i got to keep saying this the way it is. Against the TNA knockouts champion Jordan Grace, <laughs> I I have no idea how we get out of this. <laughs> I have no idea. I have oh. zero clue. Rich, please help. What are we doing here? Like there is no getting out of this. I think Jordan Grace is one in the freaking title. You think so too? I, I, I think I, I think Big Mama Pump is gonna have it, and I think this is gonna open. What did she call it? The uh, the the uh, what is it the portal the the per, the permissible por- something portal like that. it was something it was, it was some weird yeah <laughs> yeah because she has a t shirt now with it and I'm like that was fast that was quick I like the the um the t and the t n x t thing I like that a lot yeah that was yeah. cool and I remember if you go back when they had evolve the n x t and t n a tag team of Drew McIntyre or Drew Galloway at the time and Johnny Gargano. I and that, yeah, wow. I loved it because now Drew's ste- not stealing; he's stealing from himself. A lot of the character he's doing now on Raw is what he did when Johnny Gargano signed to NXT, and he'd be like, "Johnny, I'm trying to help you," and he's like beating the holy crap out of him. I remember just, that. I remember that. I'm like, oh, he and he said that to uh, 
Seamus. And I was like, oh, oh, I like where this is going. When he's like, I'm trying to help. I was like, yeah. This. So with this same thing, Jordan Grace wins it. You have a couple of other folks jump over to TNA. You have a couple of TNA folks jump over to NXT. And that's a cool summer. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I, 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 I was telling this to Mandy. Me and Mandy have a weird relationship with Jordan Grace. Mm. Mandy wants to love Jordan Grace. The problem she has is Mandy has her whole, she has the whole thing with the body image and she doesn't like all the body image stuff on her Instagram page. Mm. Personal thing, I understand it completely. Hey, no, I, I we're going to argue with her on it. I understand it completely. As a wrestling character, especially right now, because I've actually gotten me back into um, Impact since mm-hmm. the new year. I'm back into Impact. I, I try to watch it every week. Jordan Grace is turning into my favorite wrestlers in wrestling again. Her personality is amazing. She's absolutely gorgeous, despite being fucking stacked. <laughs> and I love her so much. And I was trying to find this amazing. I'm like, as a person, I have my issues. As a character, I love her. It would not surprise me at all if Jordan Grace leaves the NXT Women's Championship. And if they pull this off, and they have her parade around over on Impact with that belt, it's going to change everything. It literally changes mm-hmm. everything unexpectedly yep. so. Like, no one's ever coming a week ago. Like, it's crazy. Yeah, and if that happens, listen, I'm, I'm going to fully admit, I love Jordan Grace. I completely see yours and Mandy's points. And then I think Jordan is the, like, canary in the coal mine that allows us to open that, that gate a little bit more. And we can see, because I think this is a test. They're going to try to play nice because of the aforementioned, or we didn't mention it here, so I'll mention it now. Okay. The the lawsuit they settled with MLW. Yes, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. So they 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 alleged that you know WWE was a monopoly and they were trying to undercut the competition. They can use this to show they play nice, while at the same time, maybe the Jordan comes on over and she stays a little while, and maybe she stays forever because Shawn Michaels saw her as a big get, as like a make good for all the wrestlers that got called up that he was not prepared to lose. On the other side, if you get her, and then there's another, there's a gentleman I would like to see over here to see if we could believe in him in NXT. His name and he appears. I believe in Joe Hendry. I believe in Joe Hendry. It's terrifying. We're on the same page. I had that. I had that. All right, cute. I had that cute perfectly. <laughs> Good video. It's, it's like. I one of my best friends, Chris, his daughter was the person that was the taste master that got me into Joe Hendry because I went to visit her him for her birthday party and she just came up to me and she just started singing the Joe Hendry song. I didn't know anything about him at the time. And now I'm like, you knew like this whole time from the mouth of babes like she knew I was watching. TNA. I was watching. Actually, I was in the, I was at the hospital after my surgery and I'm watching TNA live. Because I was, I was during the day and I had the time. So I'm watching it live. And two things happened on that show. I'm going to check my nurse. And two things happened on that show. One was that it was um, Zaya Brookside's entrance. Because she has simple plan as her theme music. Which I loved that song even before it became her theme song. Like, I love that song anyway. So that would made me happy. So I'm like singing along with the simple plan song. And this guy's checking my, checking my vitals and everything. And then the next match, nurse is still in the room. We're doing our nighttime stuff. Next night, next segment is Joe Hendry. <laughs> the next segment, and no context. Music hits. It, it's sexual. You clap. It's just an instinct. And the guy looks at me like, "What the hell was that?" <laughs> what was that? I'm like, Joe Hendry. Like I can't explain it. It's what it, is. it's what it is. So that was very funny. That was the first time I'm like, okay, I understand this now. I get this. <laughs> I understand this completely. So last week, this past week, I'm watching Impact at home. He was in the main event. I've been back this Thursday, and I'm watching the show, and um, Mandy comes, to CJ's home. I'm watching it on Saturday. I got to get around to it until Saturday. I get, they get home, and I'm getting to the main event. He wins the main event. The music hits. Mandy has no real context of what's going on. She just knows the song of the thing, and me and Mark are upset with it. That's all she knows. She knows no context of what's going on. And she comes in, and she looks at the screen, and he's like, and the music hits, and she just runs into the room, does the clapping, and then runs back out of the room. <laughs> I was like, that was hilarious. <laughs> it was so funny. That's awesome. By the way, I don't know what your social media looked like on WrestleMania weekend. WrestleMania weekend, my TikTok algorithm was littered with people 
you're thinking the whole thing where Cody's gonna have all the people and someone's gonna come the term and we're gonna hear I believe in Johandry. This is going on for a week during WrestleMania week. <laughs> is it a point where am I the same algorithm as you, honey? Like are you seeing the same thing I'm seeing? <laughs> She's like, no, I'm not seeing this. <laughs> like, I don't know how it happened, but it was great to watch. <laughs> Gotta believe. That's I mean, how can you not? So there you go. I, 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 it's terrifying. I had that queued up ready to go. I have no clue. I mean, that, that was great. <laughs> anyway, main event. Again, a match that, what? Okay, sure. We have the NXT Championship. It is everyone's, everyone's favorite guy, Trick Williams, defending against, really, this is happening, Ethan Page, <laughs> who, by the way, he got, so last Tuesday, he attacks. And Mandy's like, who is that? Who is it? Because we assumed it was like, I'm on the roster. And then she's like, wait, she immediately recognized. They're like, that's Ethan Page. She's been in love with Ethan Page since he debuted in AEW. Like, absolutely love him. Like, he's, he's, he's extremely attractive. Like, she absolutely love him. So the minute he came on the screen, he's like, she's like, no. Like, Mandy doesn't react to things. And the fact that they got her to react twice with Jordan Grace and Ethan Page in the same night said so much to me about NXT right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So Ethan Page is in the main event now, and we're watching the segment this week. And she's like, mm -hmm. holy shit, I could just stare at him for hours. I could just stare at him for hours. And I'm like, if he goes to the main roster and he has a feud against LA Knight, I might be dead. I might just be dead. You might, you might, like, you might have to call it, man. Oh, my God. So Ethan Page, um, what do you do here? I, in my brain, I didn't think we were having the match on this show. I honestly didn't think we were having the match here. I thought we were saving it for Heat Wave. So I was very surprised on Tuesday. I was like, we're doing it on Sunday. I'm like, hey, what? Really? I thought we were going to save it for Canada. Um, so what happens here? I think, I think Trick retains, but something happens shenanigans-wise or whatever he might have had it agreed to in his contract that he gets a rematch in Canada if he were to lose this match. I just realized something that contract's a good point because – it could have been this whole time that his title match would have been in Canada, but Trick really wanted him for attacking him. So in the contract, he has that rematch anyway, no matter mm -hmm. what happens here. Right. Oh, I didn't think about that. That's a good point. I didn't think about that. And he told her, whatever he wants, agree to it. So that's a nice little way to kind of like. That's a great way of looking at it. It's great. I didn't even think about that. That's awesome. So, all right. Well, that's NXT Battleground 